एंड वेलकम इन दिस सेशन ऑफ योर कोर्स पेडोगॉजी ऑफ साइंस आई एम डॉक्टर गौरव सिंह योर कोर्स इंस्ट्रक्टर फॉर दिस कोर्स एंड यू नो दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग बेसिकली अबाउट द कंटेंट विच यू नीड टू एक्सप्लेन विच यू नीड टू प्रेजेंट इन योर क्लास वाइल डीलिंग विद डिफरेंट कंसेप्ट एंड कंटेंट रिलेटेड टू टीचिंग लर्निंग ऑफ साइंस द टॉपिक which i have chosen today is natural disasters and disaster management nowadays students have heard a lot about disasters they are witnessing different types of disasters in different part of the world so they are well aware about that what disaster is however when as a teacher you introduce the concept of disaster you need to explain them that disaster is something which is a threatening event or probability of occurrence of a potentially damaging phenomena within given time period and area then there are some other definitions of the disaster like international federation of the red cross and red crescent societies ifrc has defined disaster as a disaster is a sudden calamitous event that seriously disrupts the functioning of a community or society and causes human material and economic or environmental loss that exceed the community's or society's ability to cope using its own resources means when something happening naturally or due to man made disruptions and which is which is beyond the capacity of community and society to manage it is damaging so much then we call it as disaster now here you can ask your students to give you the examples of certain events which are categorized as disasters at different time you may give them to collect stories from the newspapers from internet or you can ask them to discuss the issues or the areas in which that disaster has taken place or you can divide your class into certain small groups and give one type of disaster to one group and let that group explore the disasters happening in the area which has been allotted to that group and explain it to rest of the class so we can use many cooperative learning techniques many group learning techniques here to basically introduce the concept of disaster because what disaster is actually it is said that a disaster occurs when hazard impacts on vulnerable people so means the vulnerability plus hazard in the ratio of the capacity of the individual is become disaster so when capacity is less to deal with the consequences and the combination of hazards vulnerability and the inability to reduce the potential negative consequences at the risk all these things combines and results in disaster if you teach about disaster in your class your students may give you different examples of the disasters then you need to categorize them or you can ask them to categorize that what type of disaster they consider as natural disaster and what kind of disaster they consider as man made disaster now when they consider any disaster as natural disaster it means that the naturally occurring physical phenomena which is caused either by the rapid or slow onset of the event is a natural disaster categorically they have been classified into five categories geophysical hydrological climatological meteorological and biological when we talk about the geophysical natural disasters disasters like earthquake landslide tsunami volcanic activities all comes under geophysical activity then the hydrological activity like avalanches flood where water plays an important role then climatological means due to the change in the climate it can be extreme temperature it can be drought it can be wildfire we all have seen the examples 
you can ask the students to collect the example for every such category what happened in the forest of amazons what is happening in the middle east in the extreme summers what is happening in the some area of the marathwada or in the middle part of the country due to drought they can collect a lot of information and examples then meteorological these can be cyclones storms wave surge then some biological also like the disease epidemic insect or animal plague so there are there are many examples of natural disasters what you need to do you need to explain all these type of disasters not by explaining its theory but by involving your students in collecting information about different types of disasters and let them share it with the learners so what you can do you can identify some natural disasters which are commonly occurring which are easily traceable for the students in terms of the examples and resources and you can utilize any cooperative learning theory so you can apply any cooperative learning strategy or group learning technique basically to explain different types of natural disasters in your class similar activity you can do for man made disasters also as you know that the events that are caused by humans and occur in or close to the human settlements these are they are man made disasters it can be categorized further into two categories man made includes environmental degradation pollution and accidents and uh, when we put the technological dimension in it then it becomes complex emergencies or conflicts for mine displacement population industrial accidents transport accidents many many types of disasters are there let us take few examples so that you can get an idea that how you can deal with such topics a very common topic under natural disaster is earthquakes we all know that earthquakes results due to the force which is deep within the earth's interior and the sudden break within the upper layer of the earth sometime breaks the surface which results into the vibration of the ground and which were strong enough to cause collapse of buildings and destruction of life and property there are many earthquakes in past in different parts of the country in different parts of the world who have disturbed the human life at a greater extent because the problem with the earthquakes is that earthquakes strike with no early warning so they can be devastating but after major one many times after shocks are also appearing and sometimes they are as strong as the new earthquake why earthquake happens it is a very interesting story which you need to explain to your students you can use animation there are many animation pictures available on net which you can download and show that how the movement in the tectonic plates of the earth cause a pressure and to release that pressure when the faulty plates moves it cause earthquake how india is vulnerable to the earthquake for this india has been divided into four seismic zones called zone 2 zone 3 zone 4 and zone 5 so the zone 5 is basically considered as the most vulnerable the whole northeast some part of gujarat some part of sikkim arunachal uttarakhand himachal kashmir these are and the area 5 or zone 5 so it is the most seismic active region and the second is zone 3 the second is zone 4 which is severe intensity zone so the zone next to the zone 5 whole jammu kashmir punjab some parts of uttar pradesh delhi some part of bihar jharkhand west bengal some part of maharashtra goa that comes at zone 4 next is zone 3 and the least is zone 2 which is low intensity zone which you can see that here in picture it has been shown with blue color so how the zones have been distributed the zones have been distributed on the basis of a scale called marcelli scale marcelli scale is being used to determine the impact of an earthquake at a particular place 
generally we measure earthquake in two terms intensity scales and magnitude scales intensity scales like modified mercilli scale or rosy forel scales are there these scales basically measure the amount of shaking at a particular location so earthquake may be at any place what what degree of shaking will take place at a particular place or particular location is basically measured in terms of modified mercilli scale but the popular one is richter scale which is magnitude scale and it is independent of the place or location where you are feeling the shakes it basically measure the size of the earthquake at its source so it doesn't depend from where it has been measured the earthquake may be taken place in afghanistan may be taken place in uttarakhand may be taken place in bhuj but it can be measured with the its magnitude can be measured with the same score from india from america from uh, uk from russia from different places that's why richter magnitude scale is more standard scale basically which is being used to tell that how strong an earthquake is this is just a pictorial representation of richter scale from point 1 to point 10 generally the shocks which are coming almost daily and in many number are not being felt at level 1 or level 2 then from level 3 to level 4 there are minor shocks means small moderate movements uh, if you concentrate then you can feel it then at level 5 it is strong and even can feel it that yes earth has shaken then from 6 to 7 it is strong enough to destruct the structures then eight or greater they are major or great earthquakes which can cause to human and the living animals life loss of life into millions thousands of the kilometer area is being affected by such high magnitude earthquakes second topic is flood when you think about flood flood are basically of two types floods are basically of two types generally flood can be predicted in advance except the flash flood because flood basically starts with the accumulation of water at a particular place so generally we predict that in the starting of the monsoon that how the rain will be which area will have more rain so those area may get flooded but whether it is a flash flood or it is a common flood or general flood all these impacts basically the destruction of the house crops cattle and people all the difference between the general flood and the flash flood is that flash floods are sudden and extreme volume of water that flows rapidly and cause inundation because of its rapid nature flash floods are difficult to forecast and give people little time to escape or to take food and other essential essential elements with them you must have seen a very destructive flood in uttarakhand few years back the image may be still in your mind that was an example of flash flood there are many floods in all parts of the world and let us take few example from the india itself one very worst flood was in of 21st century was in mumbai in july 2005 on july 26 2005 more than 500 cm rain was there within the mumbai in a single 24 hours and it was so impactful that the whole machinery was not able to manage but not able to drain the water there were high tide every problem was there and it killed more than 1000 people within a day or two that is one of the most worst flood 
in India in 21st century. Then in 2013, there was a burst of cloud in June in Uttarakhand near Kedarnath. And you know, the whole temple was destroyed, many small villages were destroyed, and more than 5,500 people or nearly 5,700 people lost their life. And still, body of many people are not traceable. Similarly, in 2018, we have seen a heavy monsoon rainfall in Karnataka, in Kerala, within two or three days, which has resulted more than 400 lives be lost. So whether it is flood or it is earthquake, it is not difficult to introduce these concepts to the learners because learners have experienced it, either self or they have listened the story from their parents or they have observed it on different media and social media platforms. Now the question is that if there are disasters like flood, like earthquake or like drought. What is more important? The more important is to tell to the learners what are its impact. How such disasters impact human life. Not only in terms of the loss of the life, but also loss of the money, loss of the food, loss of the place to live, so whole economy, whole society, everything gets shaken. In India, one very common disaster is drought. That means the deficiency of the rainfall over an extended period of time can be for a season, for a year or for two or three years, that is for several years. And how we calculate it? We calculate it in the relation to the multi-year average of the region. So lack of rainfall basically leads to inadequate water supply to the plants, animals and human beings and which may result in other disasters like there can be food insecurity, there can be famine, there can be malnutrition, there can be epidemics, there can be displacement of the pollution. These all are after shocks or the after impacts of droughts. If you see the map of the India, most drought prone areas are at the western part or northwestern part of the country, like in Gujarat, in Maharashtra, in Rajasthan, because they have lowest rainfall. Then there are few areas in the middle part of the country where drought occurs frequently, means every year, in once in two years, three years, four years. So most of the central part of the country, whether it is MP, either Chhattisgarh, it is a, a Maharashtra, Marathwada region, it is Andhra Pradesh, it is a Telangana, it is a Karnataka, it is Uttar Pradesh, Bundelkhand region specifically, it is Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab, all these areas sometimes face drought. Then comes the least drought prone areas. The coastal areas, most of the coastal areas, the northeastern areas, they are not that much prone to the drought. How we decide it? We decided on the basis of the rainfall. So here it is, it is in table from RBIS. And this table is showing that Assam has a very rare chance of drought once in 15 years, the history is showing. The meteorological subdivisions like West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, Konkan, Bihar and Odisha, they face drought frequently once in five years. The South Interior Karnataka, Eastern Uttar Pradesh, Vidarbha, they feel it in almost every four years. The East Rajasthan, Gujarat, Western Uttar Pradesh, they may face it in every three years and the West Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Jammu Kashmir and Telangana may face it once in 2.5 years. So this is the average frequency of deficient rainfall which basically causes to the drought. If you see all types of disasters which are taking place in the India, 
you will be surprised to note that almost 85% of the India's area are one level for one or multiple hazards. Out of 27 states and 9 union territories, there are 22 disaster prone areas. Out of which, almost 57% land is vulnerable for the earthquake, that is from high seismic zones 3 to 5. Almost 68% of the land is vulnerable to drought, 8% to cyclone, and 12% to flood. And earlier, the tsunami cases were not in India, but in 2004, there was an earthquake in Indonesia and it was so impactful that it causes tsunami in Indonesian in Chennai and Chennai got destroyed almost all coastal Chennai was destroyed now the question is if these are the disasters and as the data is showing that India is so much prone to the disasters different kind of disasters what should be the mechanism to deal with it for that Government of India has enacted an act called National Disaster Management Act in 2005. And if you read this act, this act is also showing that what disaster is. According to NDMA 2005, disaster means catastrophe, mishap, calamity, grave occurrence in an area arising from nature or man-made causes or by accident or negligence which results in substantial loss of life substantial loss of life of human suffering or damage to and the destruction of the property or the damage to or degradation of the environment and is of such nature or magnitude as to be beyond the coping capacity of the community of the affected area so if something is happening at that much magnitude that the community and society is not able to manage themselves, then it becomes disaster. Then to manage the resources, what disaster management does? Disaster management basically is a continuous cycle and it is an integrated process of planning, organizing, coordinating, implementing measures which are necessary or expedient for what for prevention of danger or threats of any disaster mitigation or reduction of the risk of any disaster or its severity or consequences capacity building preparedness of deal with any disaster prompt response to any threatening disaster situation or the disaster assessing the severity or the magnitude of the effect of any disaster evacuation, rescue, relief, rehabilitation and reconstruction all comes under disaster management. Generally in India we have a three tier mechanism for disaster management. At the highest level there is a national disaster management authority called LDMA. Then on the same lines states have states disaster management authority and further at district level we have district disaster management authorities. So NDMP in 2019 basically proposed a disaster management cycle. Disaster management should be a cyclic process. And they put it what they need to do du during the disaster, what they need to do post-disaster and what they need to do pre-disaster. So pre-disaster means the preparedness. For example, in Odisha, we have seen cyclones frequently. So the shelter homes in the cyclone prone areas have been built up already. So that is pre-disaster preparedness. The cyclone burning system has been improved so much that at present now it can give you the exact timing, exact location where the cyclone will touch the ground, what will be the air speed, what will be the possible impacts. All these are pre-disaster preparations we are prepared. Then during the disaster we need to response. For example, if there is some flood, some bare sudden flood, flash flood, how we deal with that situation? How we rescue people? How we rescue animal life? How we save the property? All comes the response to the disaster. And then post-disaster is the recovery. That how to bring the situation at normal. What steps need to be taken to bring the life back on its original path? after the disaster. 
so the disaster management has all three dimensions pre disaster preparedness during the disaster responses and post disaster recovery there is basically a national disaster management framework in india which you can see in the 2019 document also that the overall coordination of the national disaster management is being done by the ministry of home affairs and it basically designates the nodal ministers the ministries which are directly involved with the disasters then there is national disaster management authority which is the top body for the disaster management in india then we have some decision making bodies like cabinet committee on security national crisis management committee these committees takes decisions and they take decisions with the consensus with the states and state governments basically apply those then there is a uh, national executive committee armed forces are the part of it national institute of disaster management is part of it and we have now a dedicated force in india called national disaster response force and drf you must have seen the people in uh, orange uniform during the disaster what national disaster management authority does this was established basically in 2005 and it is headed by the prime minister as an apex body of the disaster management in india it is responsible for laying down the policies and guidelines for disaster management for ensuring timely and effective response to the disasters it approves the national disaster management plan and the disaster management plan of the central ministries and departments it also take measures for the prevention of the disasters mitigation preparedness and capacity building it basically has the power to authorize the departments for emergency procurement of provisions or material for the rescue relief in the threatening disaster situation or disaster it is basically there is a general superintendent in whose direction and control this institution works and national institute of disaster management nidm also works within the framework of the broad policy and guidelines laid down on the ndma now what nidm do does NIDM National Institute of Disaster Management is basically the premier institute of capacity development for disaster management in India to create disaster resilience India by building the capacity at the level by uh disaster prevention and preparedness then it has nodal responsibilities of human development capacity building training research documentation policy advocacy etc in the area of disaster management so nidm basically built a strategic partnership with various ministries and departments of the central state and local government academic research and technical organizations in india and abroad and other bilateral and multilateral integration agencies national institute of disaster management provide technical support to the state government through the disaster management centers dmcs in the administrative training institutes atis of the states or university territories then comes the ndrf national disaster response force i have already told you this is the dedicated force in india well trained to deal with the disaster situations whether it is cyclone whether it is earthquake whether it is flood whether it is drought they go and they save lives this is basically a specialist response force that can be deployed in a threatening disaster situation or a disaster the command and supervision of the ndrf is with the director general which is appointed by the government of india and ndrf position its battalion to different locations as required for effective responses all ndrf units in the states they maintain close liaison with the designated state governments and all are available in the event of any serious threatening or disaster situation and it is well equipped and trained to respond to situation arising out of the natural disaster and crbr emergencies so in this lecture i just try to explain you that what disaster are what are the common disasters in india like uh, earthquake like drought like flood and how the agencies are there to deal with it so in class you need to explain both the things not only the type of the disasters not only the examples of the disasters which student will bring how to deal with these disasters what are the agencies which are working for the disaster management how will you introduce it my suggestion is introduce it with a case study or a group activity 
we all have heard we all have seen the images the pictures the videos of the ndrf teams which are working tirelessly during the any disaster collect some pictures give to the students let them explore what this disaster was how it was has occurred what were its uh, losses in terms of life money and economy which agency came up to support or to rescue people what provisions that agency made what kind of support that agency has provided all these things you can plan so you need to engage your learners more and more you will be able to explain all types of disasters in your class so i hope that this video will help you in understanding the concept of disaster as well as the concept of disaster management thank you very much